Hi, I'm Lynn and I'm a cake decorator and tutor from West Wales. The name of my company is Lynn's Cake Creations. I've got a little bit of spare time on my hands at the moment, so I thought it would be an opportunity for me to put a couple of videos together to show those of you who'd like to start cake decorating um, the, the techniques in covering the cake with buttercream and then sugar paste and then doing simple cutout decorations and possibly some unwired sugar flowers to put on an alternative cake. Um, I'm going to s split the videos into four so that you can work through each one. Um, the first one would be buttercream in a sponge cake uh, ready for sugar pasting. The second will be covering the cake with sugar paste. The third will be doing simple cutouts and the fourth will be doing uh, simple unwired flowers. Um, in producing the videos I've tried to, to use equipment and materials that you would have in the house so you don't have to actually go out and buy lots of different things um, but I will give you advice as to equipment and materials that you can purchase if you want to. Okay I look forward to starting it um, and I will see you um, in the next episode which will be buttercream in a sugar paste cake. Hello once again. Now I'm going to start to show you how to buttercream a cake. Um, I'm going to tilt my iPad down so you can see the equipment that I've got laid out and then I'm just going to talk you through and show you the procedure that I use or the technique I use for buttercreaming um, a sponge cake. Okay, as you can see here I've got a variety of equipment most of them I've got from uh, use in the house. I've got my palette knives, I've got um, a spatula and a few sharp knives. I've also got some side scrapers. Uh, you, may, you don't have to use these but they are, can be of help. These are some I've had for years. I've had this since I was about 20 odd so it's very old. These I've bought along the way. You can get the stainless steel ones that are firmer. Um, I tend to use these when I'm doing my professional cakes because I find they're firmer and they work better. Um, I'm just going to move all of these just out of the way so you don't have to see them again only when I'm using them. Um, then I have, um, when I'm doing a round cake, I will use a turntable. Now then I've got a flat little turntable which is quite, quite useful to use. Um, something you may have in the house, maybe something like this that you've had with, um, uh, with some cookery equipment. I've had a few that I've had as servers. So you, anything that you can find that rotates may make the job a little bit easier for you. Okay, so those are two that I've got there. Then we come to the cake um, and what we're going to put it on. Now, again, for my professional cakes, I do use a cake drum. Um, these are readily available from supermarkets. Um, this is a 10 inch because I'm going to be um, covering a 7 inch cake. Uh, as I say, you can get them from supermarkets. If you don't want to get one of these, you could always use a tray that you've covered with a bit of foil. The next is my sponge and I've got three layers for this, for this sponge because nowadays people seem to like de deeper cakes so I tend to do three layers of my sponge cake. This is a seven inch and I've used four, a four egg Victoria sponge recipe for the three layers. So with my recipes I just use a basic all-in-one sponge cake so for every two eggs well not for every one egg I use two ounces of soft margarine two ounces of self-raising flour and two ounces of caster sugar now for that quantity I also use half a teaspoon of baking powder so for this cake I've used four eggs which equates to eight ounces of caster sugar 8 ounces of soft margarine, 8 ounces of self-raising flour and 2 teaspoons of baking powder. I cook it in a, uh, the oven at 160 degrees, that's a fan oven, and I cook it for about 25 minutes. You know it's ready when 
it's when you open the doors and you just slightly touch the surface of the sponge it just springs back so to prepare the sponges i've already leveled two of these but quite a good tip is if you use the cake tin that you've actually cooked the cake in to get it level just you might find you have to put something underneath just to increase the the size i've just put a couple of cake cards in this again you should have something in the house that you can just put under there perhaps even as a tea, a tea tea saucer or a plate or something that's quite narrow or a lid off a tupperware container so then i pop my cake into the the tin and i'm going to use my largest knife and you can just run the knife along the edge of the tin and that will level your cake off so then you want to take away the extra cake which I'm sure somebody in the house will enjoy and then you want to just pop the cake out of the tin okay so that now is a nice flat level surface just clear the crumbs away at this when you're buttercreaming you're always going to find you're going to have a little bit of a mess with the crumbs around and about so i've got the the, um, the cake cut just pop it on the board a minute so you can see that there the other things we need to do or to have for the buttercream uh, for the buttercreaming is obviously some buttercream and i also like to have some jam just to give a nice bit of flavour in in the sponge. You can flavour your buttercream with any sort of flavouring you want. There's so many flavourings you can get on the market. If you're doing a traditional vanilla sponge, it's quite nice to put a little drop, few drops of vanilla extract in there. I traditionally I'll use strawberry jam in my my sponges. Quite often people like to use raspberry jam. It's the preference and what you put in there is up to you. You don't even need to put jam in if you don't want to. Buttercream recipe, I use half quantities of butter to icing sugar. So if I use eight ounces of butter, I'll use a pound of icing sugar. And I mix, soften the butter to start with. Then I add eight ounces of the icing sugar or half of the icing sugar, beat that with your hand mixer or your, your your larger mixer until it's nice and soft and creamy then add the remaining icing sugar and beat that up again if you find this a little bit stiff you can always add a little bit of cool boiled water we're well not cooled but boiled water to it and that will soften it but in the temperature that we've got at the moment you'll find that the the buttercream is soft enough i always use butter because it firms up much better um, if you use soft margarine or butter alternatives, they tend to stay very soft. So it doesn't give you such a nice surface to work on. So I'd always advise use butter. Um, we're going to pop it in the fridge for a little while and the butter firms up a lot. So you're able to get a better cover with your sugar paste. So I'm going to continue now to layer up the sponge. So I've got my three layers. Because I've got three layers, I'm going to start with the upper side of the, the sponge sitting on the board. Okay, and I'm just going to centralise that and we'll get my palette knife and we'll add some buttercream to the, to the sponge. So I've added it in one dollop. Now what I do is I use my palette knife and I just work the buttercream around Try not to lift my palette knife off the surface of the cake because if you do that you can move the crumbs about a little bit. And then you can work with a, uh, with a turntable but you can see I am working without and it still works. But I actually prefer to just have the, 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 the turntable underneath because it gives me a little bit more control. So I'm turning it. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to apply some strawberry jam. Put it there to the upper side of the sponge. 
for the next layer. I'll actually put it on both of them ready. And again, the amount of buttercream you put on, uh, not buttercream, jam you put on is up to you. You know, some people like lots, others prefer less. I don't tend to put too much because it can slip about a bit on, on the buttercream. So I put that out of the way. And I'll bring those to the side. So you can see I'm working on this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop the next one on top of there and just put a bit of pressure down just to firm it all up a little bit. I never remove my baking parchment from my cakes until I'm ready to de decorate because it seems to keep them a the cakes a little bit moister. So back now, put some buttercream on this layer. And again, the amount of buttercream you put on is your preference. If you like a lot of buttercream, put more in. Okay, so again, I haven't lifted my knife up off the surface, so it's reducing the amount of crumbs that, are, that come off the sponge. I've got my next layer which is going to go on top again. When I'm doing it, I'm just looking down just to make sure that they're all reasonably even, so they're sitting one on top of the other. Again, a bit of pressure down, so it makes it nice and level. So I've got a little bit of crumbs around here, so I'm just going to remove those. And just take them away. Wipe my hands. And now what we need to do is we want to cover the whole of the cake with buttercream. I start by applying the buttercream to the top of the cake. And again, the same method as I've done before, just moving the buttercream about, trying not to lift my palette knife off the surface. Okay, so you can see the buttercream is coming to the edge of the cake, and I want it to do that because I'm going to encourage that to go down. So I'm just going to rotate around. To get a reasonably smooth surface. So what I'm going to do next now is I'm going to put some buttercream on the side. Again, try not to lift the palette knife off and just working backwards and forwards and that's going to bring in that buttercream from the top as well. And as you go around, you, you may find you don't need to put any more on to start with, but I'm just keeping pressure on all the time so as I want to avoid getting any crumbs in this, if at all possible. You don't need to worry too much because obviously this is going to be covered with sugar paste. But these days, a pop popular alternative is just having the cake covered with buttercream and no sugar paste. Now, if I was to do that, I would give this a thinner layer of buttercream to start with. Let it chill off in the fridge and then I'd come back and put another layer of buttercream on the top. But that's something perhaps I can show in another video. So you can see now how all of the cake surface is covered. There is some crumb about but not too much. And you can see that the buttercream is quite firm and is sticking quite nicely to the side of the cake. So, covered. And this is when I use my side scraper. As I say, I'll use this one so you can see 
um, how it works and I just hold my side scraper there and I twist around the side of the cake just to try and get a nice even surface well a straight surface more than even so I'm not removing much of the icing there's a few air bubbles there but you don't need to worry about those okay so I've gone around and what you want to do with the top surface of the cake then is I'll use a clean palette knife for this just to show you I just pull it in to the center so you're not losing that nice edge and I'm doing a little bit at a time and every time I take off I clean my knife off so I want to go all the way around and that's covered then take away any spare buttercream that's on the board itself so that's all cleared away and you can wipe the board down as well that's done I will now just show you how you can do it without using the turntable because I appreciate a lot of you may not have have one available so what you want to do again perhaps you're going to do this in sections now so you just use that come around so far once you've done that go around come around again and again and by doing that you can see you, you're smoothing the cake surface down. And that is your cake all ready to be sugar pasted. But what we need to do first is we need to pop it in the fridge for half an hour, possibly an hour, so that the butter crisps up, firms up. So as I say, it gives you that much firmer surface to work on um, when you're sugar pasting. Many thanks. This is going in the fridge. I'm going to clear up and I'm going to get things ready for the next stage. Speak to you soon.